I'm just glad he's paying me because Mike is just an Rolling. What? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, it's time for your weekly fix of funny. Can I get another one of these? I'm going to need this. I'm about to do this shit. So grab... Oh. I'm okay, I swallowed it. So grab a cocktail, take those pants off, and treat yourself to the sexy bald man that makes you tingle in your special place. Woo! I'm wrong! Got my mind on my money, my money on my mind, bitch! I'm house announcer Chet Jackson, and it's time for the Me, Mike, Self, and I show with... Mike Bungard! Are we done? F*** this. Me, Mike, Self, and I. It's me, Mike, Self, and I. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to another exciting episode of Me, Mike, Self, and I. And I am your host, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Mike Betancourt, episode 140. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now at 140 episodes. Thanks to you and you and you and each and every one of you that are watching right now on a Thursday night, a.k.a. Happy Friday Eve, the calm before the storm. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the inauguration, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What's it going to be like? I don't know. I think it's it's going to be chaos. Who's who say it's going to be chaos? Are there going to be bombs? Are there going to be uh, explosions? Are there? Oh, there's a comment already. Already. Let's see. Whoa, that's not the even news. No fireworks. Oh, Chris, you just you just shot the momentum, Chris. Why'd you do that? Whoa, was not even... You know what? Every day is the eve of New Year's Eve stampede. And by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you want to see the eve of New Year's Eve stampede show, then you need to go to youtube.com slash Mike B Comedy. Back to the show. Anyways, I don't know what's going to happen on Inauguration Day. I really don't know. I hope there's not bloodshed, but you never know. That could be the beginning of the Civil War, you know? We didn't think Trump terrorists were going to storm the Capitol, did we? We had no idea that was going to happen. And by the way, did anyone hear about what happened to everyone that stormed the Capitol? <laughs> did you hear? They're all on the no-fly list forever. <laughs> They're like, Trump, yeah, Trump. I'm sorry, you need to get off this plane because you're a dumbass. Why would you storm the fortress that will scan your information? You had they had their phones, they had all their data, and they're running through the, the capital like nothing bad's gonna happen. As soon as you step foot on the capital, <laughs> scanning, scanning, know everything about this person. You know why? You know why they know everything about that person? Because it's the Capitol. They they created everything there. You think you think Facebook was an idea? It started in the Capitol. The Pentagon's right there. You don't think they're not going to track you down? And when you destroy, all right, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want to talk about it. We'll wait on Judgment Day. I'm sorry, Inauguration Day. That's what I'm saying. Normally, ladies and gentlemen, normally right now we would have a wonderful section of Dustin's thoughts, but unfortunately, Dustin Wood is busy right now. Uh, I nothing bad. He's just busy, which is fine. Sometimes, you know, it's too much of me, myself, and I. I get it. So we will see you next week. And oh, hold on, another comment. Elias says, "I can't wait to see the emperor get his new clothes, aka the inauguration." Everyone's going to tune in, Elias. Everyone's going to tune. They're going to be like. Something's going to blow up. <laughs> oh, you're talking about the DJ. Gotcha. That's uh, Mark Riblet. That's right. Chris Lair says, is Dustin out buying a mask? He wishes. He wishes. Anyways, enough about Dustin. All right? It's about my guest tonight. Okay? He is a legendary comedian. If you step foot in Sacramento, you will know his name. As soon as you travel from the Bay Area, you come up to up here you will know his name his name is rico 
the great. And I'm about to bring him up. But before we bring him up, I'm going to show a clip of his comedy. And then we'll bring up the legend, Rico the Great. You like that? That was good, huh? That was good. Here we go. By the way, this clip was filmed here in Sacramento for Kevin Hart's Heart of the City. Just saying. Just throwing it out there. So enjoy. What's happening? What's happening? All right, all right. Y'all act like I got food stamps or something. Sit down. Oh, sit down. It's not a sit down. You know some of the clothes is rented. <laughs> the middle of the month, some of y'all waving like this because your nails ain't done. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So beautiful to be here tonight. Ooh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Hey, I'm having problems now. I'm, de- I'm at the point now, you know, when you're in a relationship, there's certain things you can't do around your woman. There's just certain things you just can't do as a man. I don't care how tough you is, how, I don't care if you've been in the penitentiary. If you're taking a dump, you do not want to see a woman to watch you wipe. That's your gayest moment. You're on the toilet like this. She walk in the bathroom, you're going to fall in the toilet. Get out of here! You ain't never supposed to do that. That's like taking a shower with your woman. It'd be sexy at first. I could rub the front tough. I can hear you. When they get ready to wash that butt, I can hear Wipe your butt in front of your woman and then hand her the towel. Oh. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> no, can you be in there wipe you? Because women slick, they act like they leaving out the bathroom. <laughs> you in there with the water in your butt, she looking at you, you like this. <laughs> she just changed all her views about you. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's like when they get in the shower, it'd be hot and steamy and nice. You go, I'm getting in there, this thing. Up. She looking nice. She get ready to get in that shower and touch that water, turn you into a gay man. Get in the water and go. You'd be like doing double dust trying to get in the water. With... Y'all be wondering what kind of disease she got when well, she got that water on that damn hot. <laughs> Got to be something wrong with my woman. See, I told you. Are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? Are you ready? Yes, you are, because you're watching the show right here, right now. He is from Kevin Hart's Heart of the City. He is the legendary Sacramento comedian. Please put your hands together and welcome Rico. Hey, 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 what's up, buddy? What's, what's going up, on sir? With you? How you I'm, doing, I'm, man? I'm blessed, man. Very Thank you blessed. for being on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. Smoking that fat blunt while I'm drinking to you, man. Cheers to oh, you. Oh, man. Cheers, man. I don't Cheers, drink man. no I more. I could I be stopped. smoking a blunt right now. That'd be awesome. I stopped, but the wife I stopped drinking, man. I stopped so, drinking. Dude, I would switch with it, but the wife and kids would be like, what's that smell? Are we on fire right now? <laughs> No, daddy's working. <laughs> Tell him it's biscuits. It's biscuits. <laughs> it's man biscuits. It's, it's man biscuits. <laughs> I kind of hear a little echo. Do you have speakers <laughs> on a little bit? No speakers. No speakers on. No, um, I hear a little echo, but it's okay. Your echo? Little... We're good. He said here's it. You better now? Yeah, we're good. We're good. It's all right, man. Okay. It's live. You just got to keep rolling, man. Congratulations okay. on that set and getting the heart in the city, man. That's amazing. Oh, that was- that was that was amazing, man. They uh they filmed us, but they didn't put us on TV. That's the cold thing about it, man. Me and Andre, me and Andre, we still got to perform in front of Kevin Hart and the uh, Comedy Central people. So it was a blessing, you know. And you got this uh, amazing uh, footage. Oh yeah, forever. amazing footage. Yes, yes, yeah. forever. Yeah. So, right, I mean, they got. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. 
<laughs> I'm high, man. Go ahead, man. <laughs> I got two people talking for me. I got my high person inside and the normal Rico outside. So just <laughs> forgive me sometime, man. I'm, I, it's all good. <laughs> I get high and this dude inside talks sometime. He ain't supposed to say shit. He don't come <laughs> that, out to comedy. You dude, this me? is what we're here. Let him come out tonight, man. I'm nah, like man. He's, he, he's fucking that's, crazy, man. That's the that's the whole reason why we got. I'm trying here, to man. I'm trying to smoke him down right now. No, nah, bring him <laughs> up. Turn him up, brother. <laughs> it's all good. So, how'd you get that gig? How'd you get uh, that opportunity to be on? I don't Heart know, man. City? Through through the um, a lot of people just mentioning my name and mentioning us and how the touch of class was doing at the time, mm -hmm. and they was looking for places that. Um, that they had never been to before and they heard about. So it was a lot of talk about how we was running the touch and they came through right. and they did it. It was, it was fun, what, man. It was a hell of an experience. Dude, look, you could tell, man. You could tell. You could just feel that energy and everyone just hooting and hollering and having a great time. And it, that, for the people that are watching the show right now, Touch of Class never started out like that way. You and Andre really built well, a well, great I, following. I could, I could say this much. It was, it was, it was BT Kingsley at first. Yes, BT. BT, BT ran it at first, and when he moved to LA, it was just open, and mm -hmm. they was thinking about stopping it for a minute. So, me, Andre, and Regina got together, and we just started. All right, Andre and Regina, you host our headline. So for almost two years straight, we we didn't pay for a headline. I headlined almost two years straight, and we kept a pack house. Wow, different material you know every night, every every, every Sunday. Every, Hey man, I, I've been doing comedy ten years. I've never wrote a joke in my life. That's never. because you, you are comedy, my friend. Man, I am. Hey, hey, man, I've been through so much, man. Everything I talk about is just my life, man. So I don't. People are like me, you should write, and I'd be like, man, I can't. My mind moves too fast, right. and the way I think about things, it just comes. Boom, 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 boom. So I don't right. know, man. I don't know. Well, we'll get to your life, but talking about uh, Touch of Class, for people that don't know, Touch of Class is a very, it can be a very tough room and it can be a very rewarding room. One thing, the great thing about Touch of Class is the crowd lets you know if they like you or not right off the you chain. Got, you got black yeah. people spending $10 to come see comedy. On a they Sunday. On a Sunday. Yeah. Day before work, all kind of shit. Yeah. And it's late, chicken, they eating chicken, they drinking. Uh -huh. Motherfuckers want to laugh. They got problems. They didn't have problems. They know the problem about to start Monday morning. So they want to go into Monday morning with a laugh. If you ain't right. funny, they're going to let you know, man. It's just like the Apollo. It's like the Sacramento mm -hmm. Apollo at that place, man. If you That's funny, what I, heard when I, I don't care if you white, black, Chinese, you could be green. It don't matter. If you funny, they love you. There's so mm -hmm. many people who've came there thinking that, oh, this is just a black crowd. We'll, now nah, they give it's the most respectable crowd when you're good at your craft. Mm -hmm. When you're practicing your craft and you're coming in there doing your thing, it's a respectful crowd. But if you're not funny, they're gonna let you know, bro. Yeah, you feel what no, I'm saying? I love, I love it. when I first moved up here about almost 15 years ago. First room they told me is like, you need to go to touch a class to get strong. I was like, what's touch a class? And I went to touch, I was like, oh, this is a great room, man. You can yeah. feel the energy, and when even when you when you don't do well. You want to come back. <laughs> like this, it's like this rewarding thing that you owe it to yourself. If you're if you're a true comedian, you owe right. it to yourself to destroy. I've seen a lot of comedians do that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of um, I've seen a lot of my white friend comedians come through the touch and think like, oh man, I'm not gonna be able to get up here and go up there and kill shit. It's and, intimidating. And leave, and leave there like, man, Rick, I, I went to the touch and I said, man, come on, man, it's the same thing, man. Just just be you. Don't yeah. be scared, man. That's just like any stage. Just don't be scared. If they don't yeah, like who you are, then hey, fuck it. Yeah. I remember one time I saw uh uh Big Les. She was uh she was at the touch class and she just she murdered tore it. that room she apart. Murdered. She, she murdered got it. off you remember that when she got off the stage and, and started messing with people in the crowd and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone. She, she, but but we've had Tiffany Haddish. Mm -hmm. Right before she got our stardom, Low Rail came. I mean, these people have came and sat on our stage, and these are people that we haven't paid at all. They just came. You know what I'm right. saying? Heard about the place, and they came there, and they did Earthquake. I mean, yeah. we've had a lot of people come to the touch of class and sit down and 
And Deion Cole came one night set. He didn't get on stage, but he but he came in there and he sat and watched us do comedy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Phase on love. We didn't had we didn't had some good people in there, man. Some good people. And you, you know, you got your regulars too that you know they just love to laugh and. Right. What's great about your room is that they don't hold any punches and they, they don't want to hear any BS. That's the great thing about it. They don't want to no hear bullshit, any of that. Yeah, none of that bullshit, none of that. man. None. No bullshit. And it helps you be a better comedian to get to that funny quicker. Because you don't got that time, man. No, you don't, dude. My fuck will <laughs> get you out of there. As soon as you walking to the stage, they're already like, nah, he's not funny. They already, it's, they like, already know. It's, it's like walking the plank, man. You, yeah. You, you want you... Once you get to the end, are you going to jump in the sharks or are you going to bounce over them motherfuckers, man? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Shit. And you, know? so you, were, you were headlining that for two years straight every single on the Sunday night. Every single Sunday. Wow. Two years. Wow. And, and kept a pack house. Wow. Every, every Sunday, different comedy. Not, wow. never the same. Never the same shit. Different 45 minutes. Basically. Different 45, sometimes an hour. Wow. Depends on, depends on how I felt, how high I was, really. Wow. You know, and how, how much energy I got from the crowd. You know, I'll do about an hour, maybe an hour and a half sometime. I don't I don't know. It's just I'm not no, I'm that's not writing it. It's just it's just I do it, man, and I love it. I mean you yeah. got if you understand where I come from to where I'm at now, man, you would it would it would it would blow people's minds, man, you know, to know that I'm the person I am now, the the person I was, you know. So that's like yeah. We got the show for it. Let's talk about it. Yeah, Let's talk about yeah, where, yeah. where did Rico start in there? Where'd you start? Where, how how did your life begin? I, I I was a I was I was born in Sacramento, raised in Berkeley. Okay. I was raised in Berkeley all my life from like four years old. My mom moved to Sac. My mom moved to to Berkeley at when I was four because she got a job at Cal at the okay. University of California. And uh, me, her, and my stepfather moved out here, moved to Berkeley. And my dad was from Sacramento. My mom's from Sacramento. But my dad was a street dude. He was heavy in the streets. My dad was a pimp, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so in the, so it was like, I would go to my, be with my mom, my stepfather, my little sister. I come home at the right time. I played basketball. I was a basketball star growing up. I played basketball with Jason Kidd and all the other Phenom basketball players from the Bay Area. I, uh, I held my own in basketball. Like I was dunking the ball in seventh grade. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. So, yeah, I was playing. I, I played ball, man. I was a serious basketball player, and uh, that was my dream, man, to play ball. So that kept me in tune. But in the summertime, I would come to Sacramento, and it's my father, the pimp, my uncle's a pimp, and my auntie was a hoe. So it was like. I seen a whole different life, man. You know what I'm saying? My dad wasn't no bubblegum pimp. He was a real international pimp. So when all the pimps came to town, they would come to my grandmother's house to meet my father. Wow. So I was around all that shit. The Filmo Slims, the Kenny Reds, the Gangster Browns, whoever you can name. That was a top pimp in the game. DJ Magic One, Don Juan? Yeah, man. That's my, that's my dude, oh, man. Shit. Yeah, man. You met that's him? My, Plenty. I got pictures with him, man. And everything. That's my dude, man. That's the bishop, man. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the our, bishop. Our, bishop. Our, yes, yes. That's the bishop right there. That bishop of the game right there. You know, I do. They do a party every year. Uh, the players do, and I host it in Sacramento. I'm the host every year. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. uh, my my a lot of them are like uncles to me, man. I got wow. a uh, get, you know what I'm saying. I got an uncle named Ray Farley. You can look him up. They made. He did a movie. They did a movie and a documentary about him. One of, the, uh, one of the richest dudes that ever come out of California in the game, man. And he's still alive and kicking. Rolls Royces, Bentleys. Uh, that, that's my, that was my dad's best friend. So, I mean, I grew up around a lot of, a lot of real, <laughs> man, real, real dudes in the game, man. I seen a lot of things growing up. Yeah, you know, I love that movie, uh, American Pimp. That's my that's uncle's a, in that movie. Which one? Which one? Which pimp the is it? The one he? in front of D.C. Oh my God! No yeah, shit. Yeah, that's my auntie's <laughs> husband, man. Kenny Red. Wow. Shout out to Kenny Red, man. Yeah, the one that says his mouth is like a Uzi. Yes. Yeah, yeah he shoots it. Yeah, yes. that's my uncle, man. That's my uncle. Oh man. my God. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my uncle. Wow. He was married. He was married to my auntie before. Yeah, the, the glasses and he's talking smack in the barbershop and everything. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Calling the woman a bitch and all that. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my uncle. <laughs> yeah. So Oh so, my God. So just think about that, man. These are the people I grew up around. You know what I'm saying? These are the people I grew up. Rosebud in the movie. That's my that was my dad's friend. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, these are the people that yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Dude, I I watch that every year. I I own it and I watch that my, movie every my uncle, year. My uncle was supposed to be in the movie, but he didn't do it. He uh he has a business right now, so he didn't get in the movie. But my uncle uh used to mess with Jane Kennedy, used to mess around with Shaka Khan. I mean, I'm I mean these dudes was my uncle and my dad and it was in the game, man. I mean, I was really around some some cold people, man. I mean, I, a lot of my comedy comes from that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, but it was never influenced for me to do it. I, I played basketball. I, I was right. a, a basketball nut. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to do nothing else, sell no drugs. I didn't want to run the streets. I was just a normal kid, man. But I just had this other life when I went to Sacramento. It was like I went to pimp boot camp when I left when I left left uh, Berkeley, you know what I'm saying? You know, so I mean, you must was, have learned so much about business yeah. through the pimp game. I learned a lot about life, man. Mm. I seen a Would lot you? of life. I seen a lot of people come and go. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I mean, I seen the ins, I seen the outs, I seen the tragedies, I seen the 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 benefits. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, I seen it all the way around, man. I was never ashamed of it as a kid, you know, because when you're a kid and your father is in a life like that, people look at you different, you know? Mm-hmm. And and it's crazy because at 14, I would go to people's house and they would be like, who are you related to? And I, I'd, I'd look at them like, all right, here it comes. And I'd tell them my name and they go, oh, you're Rico. Rico, and then, you know, my dad was such a pimp. His name was Pimpin' Rico. That was his, that was Pimpin his street Rico? name. Pimpin' Rico, that was his wow. street name. So they'd be like, you Pimpin' Rico, son? Like, yeah, I'm, that's my dad, man. You know, it was just like when I was young, it was taboo. You didn't tell people your dad was a pimp. Right. So I didn't brag about it. Nobody knew my dad was a pimp till he came to my basketball game with three hoes. So <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth, man. This is this is my life. What my father like? came. Man, I'm, I'm dribbling down court. You can see the whole crowd. Went quiet, bro. I'm talking about the whole crowd went quiet. Like, <laughs> the whole crowd went quiet to see this man walk in in the suit with three women. Right. Man, I, I said, oh, fuck, goodness, man. I can, see, I, can, I can picture the whole crowd, go fight, win. I was like, right. They looked over and they was Come like, in. wow. So everybody looked at me like, that's your dad? I, me and my, I looked in on my father. So it was like, Come on, man. Your, that's what your dad do? So you now you gotta tell everybody, yeah, yeah, my dad's a pimp, man. Yeah, I bet yeah. you that ref was scared. He's like, I'm not gonna call foul on it was, Rico it, at all. It was <laughs> it was it was just crazy because people look at you different, you know? Right. It was just, you know, it was a it was a different look towards me. So it, it kind of in a way it was kind of funny, but then in a way it was, you know, I didn't give a damn, man. That's I, what's I, great about you, man. You're not ashamed of your roots. Nah, nah, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. I'm not, not ashamed a, of where I come from, man. Where I came from made me who I am today. Amen. Because before they were pimps and prostitutes and all that, they were women and men. So mm-hmm. they taught me how to be a, become, be a man, how to be on my own. You know what I'm saying? My father always taught me to be a leader and not a follower. You know what I'm saying? So I grew up around a lot of game and no games. You know what I'm saying? It's a mm-hmm. difference. So a lot of things that were, ta- that, were, that were thrown at me, I still use them to this day. And that's why I'm surviving to this day. I yeah. love that what you just said, man. I grew up around a lot of game, but no games. That's such no a games, great. Man. That's a great right. concept. You don't cut. You cut out that bullshit, and you stick with what's true to you. And that's what's amazing. You. Yeah, man. man. You stay being you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm respected because I stay being me. I don't. I don't try to be nothing else. I'm not no gangster. I'm not no killer. I'm not none of that stuff. I'm just a regular dude, man, who love life. And it's been through a lot. That's it, man. I don't, I don't, I don't want to put on no accolades or nothing more than that. You know, right? So when you, um, when you're doing stand up, you know, how, like a lot of comedians compare stand up to boxing with the jabs right. and the punchline. Do you compare stand up to the pimp game? 
of how you get your jokes and how you flirt with the crowd? Yeah, yeah. Because you got to be raw with the crowd sometimes. Sometimes you got to cuss the crowd out. You gotta I've seen you. Them. I've seen shut you, the fuck up. Shut the fuck I up. You, I see you hold your pimp hands strong. I've seen yeah, you Yeah, shut the days. fuck up. You know, like, shut the fuck up. Don't nobody come to hear your ass. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just, I don't know, man. It's the same way. You de- you demand that same respect, you know? Right. That, that, that I, I want that because I'm giving out something that we all need. We all need to laugh because it's making me laugh making them laugh it, it fills my spirit you know what right. i'm saying so i mean it, i mean everybody came to laugh and feel their spirit man nobody came to hear you so yeah i'm gonna cuss you out i want that respect you dude, know what i'm saying you gotta, dude, i've seen you i was like what i saw you one time in the i was in the back i was like dude he's gonna kill somebody he's gonna fight this. but because you got this aggression and then you right. flip the script and then you're funny as hell dude i mean it's it's, it's uh I don't I don't know man. Like like I said man, I, I me being who I am and growing up the way I did, I played like I said I played basketball for years. I mm-hmm. I didn't do anything else. I never ran the streets, none of that stuff. And I was 21. I was on my way to to go work out. And at this time I was the best I'd ever been in basketball in my life. I just came back from Puerto Rico. My father got killed in 93. My father got killed in 93, so this was 94. I just came back from Puerto Rico playing basketball. I was getting on the freeway here in Sacramento to go to my trainer, and my car spun out of control on the freeway. I got hit by a diesel. Diesel hit me on my driver's side, broke my leg in half, broke my collarbone, smashed my face in, almost died in 95, man. Uh, they told me they, they 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 almost thought they was gonna have to amputate my leg. My leg was broken in half. Oh, I made it through that, and it changed my whole life. You know, I didn't have basketball no more, so it was like I went to a dark place. I went to the streets, and when I went to the streets, I went to the streets heavy, man. It was it was it was crazy. You know, it was were a you, crazy crazy mind, life. Uh, you mind talking about what you were doing on the street? Were you pimping, or were you yeah, just yeah 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 yeah, yeah pimping? Running women, doing whatever I could to make some money, whatever mm-hmm. I could to stay out the penitentiary. How long? How long were you pimping for? Till you discover comedy. Yeah. Long time, long time doing drugs. I got uh-huh. on the powder cocaine. I popped the pills. I ran with the Mac Dre's. I did all that shit, man. I did all the crazy shit. Pop mushrooms. I, I mean, I was I was out here wild, man. You know what I'm saying? Pistols on my lap, and you know just. A whole life that I never thought I'd live a day in my life. You know what I'm saying? I became a person that was dark. I was dark because I didn't have no outlet, you know? And the only outlet I had was living that life. You know what I'm saying? So I never thought about being a comedian because I wasn't happy. You know what I'm saying? So I, I made people laugh and I was funny as a kid and I was always known for, because where I'm from in Berkeley, everybody talks about each other. It's called, we call it capping. We cap on each other all day. So if you wasn't if you wasn't dressed nice or you wasn't clean cut or nothing like that, we'd get on your ass. You know what I'm saying? So I learned how to cap. And then being around the pimps and the way they talk, I learned how to put words together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I got into the street life real tough, man. And one day, man, I just uh I was doing this is this is just my testimony, brother. I was doing some coke, man, and I just didn't want to do it no more. I got on my knees, prayed to God, and asked him to get it out of my life. I threw the shit in the toilet, flushed it, and never looked back. I ain't never did it again. It's been about 18 wow. years now. You know what I'm saying? No drink, no drink, no powder, no pills, no nothing. 18 years, man. All with the help of God, man. You know, having faith. So once I did that, man, I got sick. After that, I ended up getting sick. I ended up getting the thyroid disease. Thyroid disease was tearing me up, man. I'm talking about like, oh, man, I was I was tear, toe up, losing weight, gaining weight. And then one day I was at a comedy club with my brother and his, and his, uh, and his girl worked at the bar and a dude, Meal Ticket, a little fat dude named Meal Ticket, kept saying, man, you need to be a comedian. You funny. I was like, man, get out of here with that shit. I don't want to be no fucking comedian. At the time, I'm scared, man. I don't want to do no shit and people laugh at me or I got this chip on my shoulder for that. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm running around there with guns and all kinds. I don't want, 
Hell no, nah, I don't want to be on no stage, you know? So one day, man, he just called me on stage. He was like, Rico the Great, next on stage. Me, I wouldn't have never called myself Rico the Great. Rico the Great came from a, a friend who just passed away. He gave me that name because he said I'd give him great, great advice. So he was like, you Rico the Great. And I was like, Rico the Great? He was like, yeah, Rico, duh, great. Nigga, duh, you great. And I was like, all right, well, fuck it. I'll be Rico, duh, great. All right, whatever. <laughs> so people start calling me this shit before I ever did comedy. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That was like my street name for a minute. And then he called me on stage. I wouldn't have never called myself Rico the Great on stage because that name, the Great. So motherfucker, you got to be good to call yourself this name. You know what right. I'm saying? And I went on stage and I did about 15 minutes, man. First people time, 15 minutes? 15 minutes. And people wow. laughed. People were laughing. I was like, what the fuck? These people, I don't know how to put a joke together. I don't know a punchline. I don't know shit. I'm just telling jokes about my family, the pimps, and just, you know, growing up as a, as a, as a, as a young nigga. And man, people laughed. And I was like, man, this shit is like a drug. It took away some of that darkness from me. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, damn, this felt good. So I went on that night. I was juice. I was like, man, this is, that felt good right there doing this. First time on stage. Wow, it's incredible. I came back the next week. All these people came. And I'm like, wow, all these people coming. Like, we came to see this dude named Rico the Great. They say he's funny. And I'm like, the fuck? So I got on stage, did it again. And just after that, it was just a learning process. You know what I'm saying? I learned on the job, basically. Right. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know how to bring a joke back. I didn't know how to put a joke together. I just watched other comedians. People like Andre Bailey, Lance Woods, Tristan. Uh, them is dudes who like kept me focused on comedy. Because really and truly, I want to go back to the streets, man. You know what I'm saying? I was ready to, this shit ain't making no money. I'm running around here doing this comedy shit for $15, $20. What the fuck is going on? This ain't me. You know what I'm saying? But as I say, God humbles you, man. And he humbled me, man. I went through some things with that, as I said, with the thyroid thing. You know what I'm saying? And I ended up having two thyroid storms. Then That's when your body go off whack. I almost died from that. Then they put me on a drug called Coumadin, and the Coumadin caused a blood clot in my brain. So I was uh, Christmas Day, seven years ago, Christmas Day. I got a headache, man, and I told my auntie to take me to the hospital. She took me to the hospital. I jumped out the car. I walked to the, 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 the booth to talk to the lady. She's like, what's wrong? I'm like, man, I got the worst headache I ever had in my life. I fall out. I wake up 12 days later out of a coma with staples in my head. And I don't my, remember that at all, man. Man, I had a, I had a, I had a brain aneurysm, man. Whoa. No yeah. one said anything about yeah, that. Yeah, right here, man. My, I don't know if you can see it here, but my whole head on the side was open, man. Yeah, I had oh a brain God. aneurysm. Christmas Day, uh, seven years ago, man. So wow. I've been hit by diesel. I ain't even tell you about the time I got shot. I had been shot. <laughs> I'd have been almost kidnapped. Oh, man, man Rico have been through some shit, man. And God is I beautiful. I thought you Rico the Great. You're surviving man, it, man. And God is beautiful, man. God is a blessing, man. They told my moms I wasn't going to walk, talk, all kind of stuff, man, in this hospital, man. And, and within a month, I was up walking and talking and moving around. And before I knew it, I was back on stage, man, serving God's purpose. You know what I'm saying? My whole spirit is different, brother. I mean, it's like I'm so humbled by life and by, by, by God. It's like the humbling is way different than any humbling you can get from a man. You know, if a man whoop your ass, it might humble you. You know, that never humbled <laughs> me, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Getting hit by a diesel didn't. I mean, it, it humbled me, man. Right. Going through this brain aneurysm humbled me. It made me want to look at life different. It made me want to love different, man. You know what I'm saying? So... It made me want to make people laugh more, you know, because I know my purpose now. And to have a purpose is to have a, 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 a beautiful spirit, man. Your spirit is beautiful when you make other people's spirit beautiful. So serving God's medicine 
is the most beautiful thing I could ever do. You know what I'm saying? From all the corruption and all the shit I did before, man. You know, God take care of babies and fools, man. And I was a baby fool out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm blessed not to be in the penitentiary. I'm blessed not to be dead, you know? I mean, I was really in a, a fast life and it wasn't the life I wanted, you know what I'm saying? So for me to be able to open up this door of comedy and be able to do comedy, it's a blessing, man. And every every day, I thank God that I opened up that door because I, I wouldn't have did it, man. I was scared. You made you that know? choice. That's yeah, what's great yeah, about yeah, it. You yeah, made yeah. the choice. No one else made it for you. Right. Not a judge or a jury. You made that own choice right, and you threw right. away the cocaine and God opened that window for you. Right, God. right, right, right. Because uh man, I was I was out here, man. I was I was one of them guys, man. You didn't want to <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was out for yeah. mine, man. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it's just it's just beautiful to be able to be a blessing, bro. That's it. So you when know? you did stand up for the very first time, did you feel a peace at your heart knowing yeah. that this is the right path? It felt it felt good to make other people feel good, mm -hmm. you know, and to, to do something that I always loved. I always loved making people laugh. Even back when we was young, I, you know, when you look back and reflect on life, you look at some of the things that you did, and it's like God was preparing me for this. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to sit in front of my grandmother's house and all my friends would sit out in front and I would talk and tell all these jokes about the pimps and the, the prostitutes and all the stuff that was going on around the house and people would come and just laugh. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's like when I thought back on that, I was like, God was preparing me for the stage the whole time and I didn't even know it. You know what I'm saying? Because where I'm from, everybody's funny. All my right. friends are funny. In Berkeley, all my friends are funny. We all talk shit about each other. I don't care how good you dress. You don't care what you got on. You can wear Gucci, whatever you want to wear. All my friends are funny as hell. And we just, we talk shit about each other so much. And we talk shit about shit that might have happened to you when you was a kid. It don't matter. We just, if you pissed on yourself when you was in the fifth grade, you still pissy John. When you walk, when you ride up now, and you're 48 years old, you still pissy I'm, ass motherfucker. <laughs> a millionaire, he's probably a millionaire. Yeah, driving motherfucker had money. You can ride up with pissy the, John still. <laughs> man, how you got a girlfriend, Prissy John? You know what I'm saying? It's still we still we still gonna. You know, everybody has that one time your parent disrespected the shit out of you in front of your friends, so they bring shit up like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I remember one time I didn't go to an after school program. I went to play basketball instead. And my stepfather came up to the park and said, oh, yeah, you know what this means? You didn't go to the uh, after school program. Your Julius Durbin days are over. <laughs> <laughs> my Julius Irving day, they Damn. do that. They do that joke to this day. Damn. To this day, they tell me that. Hey, 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 Rick. Your Julius Irving days is over. And it, we just, we laugh like a motherfucker about it. And this happened in the fourth grade, man. Wow. This happened in the fourth grade. We still laugh about it. And half of us damn near 50 right now. Wow. Yeah, man. Wow. That is, that is, man, you got a beautiful story, man. It's oh, so, man. I'm really glad that you had a chance to share it with us. Um, do you think that you should be a, a mentor? for upcoming comedians coming through? Or you think well, they should just survive on their own? I mean, if I can help in any kind of way, I would. You know, it's yeah. always a blessing to help anybody, man, or either give them some advice. I mean, but really and truly, I'm still learning. You know, I mean, it's, right. it's a saying that my father used to say, it's tattooed on my arm. It's, if you drop your books, you lose your lessons. So as long mm. as you keep your books in your hand and you keep studying, you can always be good at something. You yeah. know, long, if you're a doctor, you never stop studying. You feel me? If you're a lawyer, right. you never stop studying. You never drop your books. You drop your books, you lose your lessons. You know, right. you miss out on everything. So as long as I'm doing comedy, I'm going to stay studying. I don't care who it is. I don't care white, black, Chinese, whatever. I want to know what makes everybody laugh. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want to know no, what makes support. There's a science to it. I 100%, it's a, it's 100 a, man, agree. Hey, man, this shit is scientific, and it's an art, man. It's like having mm -hmm. a paintbrush in your hand. You got to paint a picture, man, that's beautiful to everybody, not just one race of people, but everybody. Right. Yeah, everybody wants to know something about you 
or something about their life that you can make them laugh about. You know what I'm saying? So right. I'm a crowd. I'm a crowd guy. I, I look in the crowd and I see what kind of people in the crowd. If I see it's young people, I know what to talk about. You know what I'm saying? If I see if it's an older crowd, I know what to talk about. You know, it's just it's just a matter of picking up and knowing your crowds, man. You can't. You don't want to talk about pussy dick fuck in front of a bunch of crowd that's, you know, everybody's pussy dick fuck don't work no more. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> you go to the retirement community. Yeah, hey, yeah. You know, hey. Dick work still? Yeah. Huh? You know, remember last time you got your dick sucked? His motherfucker like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker got all time. He, he can't remember last time he He's pulled his own dick time. out. <laughs> <laughs> he can't remember last time he pulled his own dick out. Shit, you know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> <laughs> but you you want to do pussy dick fuck jokes in front of the old people? Come on, man. Right. You got, it's just a, it's a, it's a it's a it's a lane, man. You got to find it, man, and and go and go at it. You know. How how have you been uh, studying during uh, the times of COVID? Have you been doing Zoom shows, or have you been trying to get some? Live I shows? do shows wherever, man. I've, I've yeah. done a show in a motherfucking car the other day. Motherfucker nice. paid me to do a show in his car. In his car. <laughs> in his car. Gave me a hundred dollars and said, "Rick, make me laugh." And Damn! I, I went to work. <laughs> nice. Went oh, to work. Man. Hundred dollars just to make him laugh in his car, man. Dude, For old school comedy. Dude, that's man, I did that's comedy in the garage. Right I've done garage comedy, backyard comedy. I mean, I've, man, I don't care, man. Right. Whatever you want to get down, like, let's do it. You know, as long as the shit is safe, as long as it's safe. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. As long as it's safe and nobody's getting hurt or none of that shit, I'm, I'll do comedy wherever, man. That's great, you know, man. I, I just love making people laugh, man. That's it. I mean, it's like, it's a drug, man. And when I don't have it, I, I go somewhere and find it. I don't give a fuck. I'll go to the store and start a show. I don't care, man. I'm just always on go with comedy, man. That's it. You, that, know, I, you, know, I ride, you have to be with comedy. I, I ride around, I smoke weed sometimes, and I listen to R&B music a lot. Mm -hmm. And R&B music takes me back to good times and bad times. You know, it takes me back to being in love the first time, getting my heart broke. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, it just takes me back to the better times of being with family. You know, when I listen to this rap shit, it makes me want to sell crack and, and and go back to pimping and, <laughs> and do shit that I don't even, I would never do in my life. You know what I'm saying? It just, right. it's, it's, it's crazy, man. I like to listen to slow music. And think about life, and that's how I come up with a lot of my comedy, man. I don't write; I just mentally keep it in my head, and I come up with new jokes all the time. And when I do, I just try them, you know. And if I try them and they like them, I keep them. I keep them going. But it's just hard for me to remember sometimes, as the, as people say that I do a whole show and won't remember none of the shit I said, and then go do another show and do a whole another set. Wow. So I've done it at Punchline. Like people see me at Punchline and they go, "Okay, I'm gonna go see you at the test of class," and then they expect the same show. And it's it's a whole different, whole different. It's show. an out of body experience. That's why you don't forget. That's why you don't remember because you're just completely giving yourself be, away. I, and then when I watch people who take me, I sit and I laugh because I know I made this shit up while I was sitting right there with you guys. Some of these jokes I just made them up as I was just. And I'm going, wow. I'm amazed at it sometimes. I give God, I got to tell you, I tell a story, I give God the glory, man. I'll be like, God, you really was walking with me. And the spirits of my ancestors, they rock with me, man. Mm -hmm. The people I've lost, my father, my grandmother, my, 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 you know, my cousins, my little nephews and shit like that. I keep them spirits with me. Them, them, them smiles, they, they stay in my mind, man. You know what I'm saying? And they, they keep me going. You know what I'm saying? Because I love to see them. I love to keep them spirits happy. And I know if I'm happy, them spirits is happy. Because they was happy when they left here with me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. That's beautiful, man. Wow. That that, that touches the soul right there, man. Yeah, yeah. Man, that, the, the best thing I ever did was doing this because I get to see my mother proud of me, man. You know what I'm saying? That's the biggest, that's the biggest, that's the biggest pay. I could ever get from here, man, is to see my mother proud of me. You know what I'm saying? That damn to bring me to tears, bro. That's 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 the biggest thing, bro. To see yeah. my mother proud. She loves you, man. She's happy for you. 
she knows she's she's bro you're bringing joy to people's lives man how could you how could they not be proud of you yeah. how could your mother not be proud of you yeah you, you're you you know what you're doing on a daily basis when you're making people laugh you're pulling people back from that edge yeah. from that ledge yeah. you're pulling them back there's so much mental illness there's so much uh, yeah depression. that's where there's so well, much hurt in this world and you're well, taking with, with them off me, that ledge with me it's like I know the mental illness because I've been through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I I know what it is to have problems upstairs. You know what I'm saying? And not be able to tell nobody. So when I got out of the, the brain aneurysm, I went to go see a specialist to talk to somebody. Best thing I ever did in my life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to seek professional help and know and and not and and know you need it and don't do it, that's crazy. That's mental insanity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're mentally not stable, how can you be stable with another human being? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And the, you know, you we we hurt people hurt people, you know what I'm saying? So it's so a lot of people would love to get hurt by people that are hurt me mentally, and they don't know that these people are hurt mentally because they never get a chance to find out. It's a lot of people with darkness on their soul and they never let this stuff out and they end up taking it out on other people. You know what I'm saying? And they look like the bad guy. Doing right, it. right, yeah. right, right. So, I mean, if you ain't got nobody to talk to, sometimes it's, it's fucked up mentally, especially if you don't know you got God to talk to. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of brothers don't know that. A lot, of, a lot of men don't know that. We can't, we can't go to each other and hug each other like that. It's not, it's not what we do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like me crying. Motherfucker like Rico crying. Man, think about my mother. That's my that's my dog, man. That's my mm -hmm. you know? Shit. So we don't we don't love like that man no more. You know what I'm saying? I preach that all the time. I gotta do a little thing every day called uh lessons and blessings, you know, with good music playing and everything. And I just I try to tell people to be a blessing to each other. Because what you plant in the earth is what you get out the earth, man. You know what I'm saying? So if you ain't planting nothing beautiful, you ain't getting nothing beautiful. And I feel like me doing comedy, making people laugh, and being a blessing, I'm, I'm planting seeds for not just me, but my kids later on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And even my my family members, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about it's all about being a blessing, man. Spiritual growth, man. Everything's about spiritual growth for me right now. If your spirit ain't right, that that material shit, you're going to get that. But if your spirit ain't right, you ain't going to be happy with none of that shit. Yeah. You're you can have everything chasing. in the world. You're you feel me? Chasing. Yeah. Right. I get it. That's like doing comedy. If my spirit wasn't right, I wouldn't be able to do this shit, bro. You have to have a good spirit to do stand-up comedy. Come man. on, I, man. I, yeah, I get it. You man. know what I'm saying? If yeah. I'm telling you my problems. You know, it's like it's like uh, people don't understand when you do comedy. It's like I'm I'm giving you a dose of what's going on in my world. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm opening up your world in the same breath. But like, but you know, some some things people don't understand. Man, they don't understand that. You know that it's hard getting on stage and looking at a crowd of people you don't know and making them and laugh. open yourself up to them. Right, yeah. for them to go, oh, man, I don't want to hear that shit. Yeah. Or for a motherfucker to talk while you doing your thing. Right. Why is you talking? You know what I'm saying? Can you come up here and do this shit? That's what I be wondering. When I hear people in the crowd like, oh, he ain't funny. That nigga ain't funny. That motherfucker ain't funny. Well, can you do it? You go up there and stand in front of a bunch of motherfuckers you don't know and tell them a story <laughs> and see what you get out that shit. <laughs> It's like rolling <laughs> dice, bro. We don't know what the crowd going to do. Dude, every day we go up on stage, it's rolling man, dice. come on, man. <laughs> man. That's the hardest fucking job on earth. But the best pay is when I be at a show and somebody come up to me and be like, man, I was having a fucked up day. Yeah. And your, your comedy brought me out of that. Or people I don't know see me on the street, run up on me like they know me. What's up, Rico, man? You... And I'd be like, whoa, I don't because you really don't see the crowd. People don't understand that. We don't see the crowd when we're on stage. There'd be too many lights and shit mm -hmm. sometimes. So a lot of people you don't see. 
And then they see your act, and sometimes they don't get to meet you after the show. And these people see you on the street, and they're still excited with your comedy. And they'll see me and be like, Rico, oh, man. And I'll be like, whoa, I'm a street dude. So I'll be kind of scared sometimes when somebody yelling out my name like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Rico the Great, what's up, motherfucker? And I'm like, oh, shit, who the, who the fuck is this? And, and you know, it's just, it's just crazy sometimes because everywhere you go, somebody knows you. But it's a blessing. Because you're, you're, you're talking to them. Yeah, it's a blessing, though, man. It be, I'd, be so, with them. I'd be so happy to see people because when they see me, their spirit is happy. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a happy person. I don't care what's going on in my life. I don't, I'm not going to take that out in the world, man. I'm going to yeah. give it to God every time. I don't, take it, I don't take problems out in the world, man. I got a lot going on just like anybody else in life. You know what I'm saying? I'm not... My life ain't 100% peachy king and all that, but I'm not taking them emotions out in the world. You can't be successful using emotions, man. Emotions is for relationships. Emotions is for family. You can't use emotions out to be successful. You know, I can't use my mother. I don't fuck with him. Is he, cause, nah, I can't do that. I can't. That's emotional. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't doing no comedy with him because I don't fuck with that dude. No, nah, no, nah, that's emotions, man. I'm not about to let my emotions stop me from being successful, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's so easy to get involved with your emotions through business. Right, right. That's how so that's how people to. that's how people be like, I ain't going to work out. I'm, I'm mad at my girl. I ain't going to work out. Them weights and that and that muscle don't care about that. They right. don't give a fuck about that. How you gonna be successful? At what you want to do and reach your goals by running your emotions to, to it? Right. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that, man. It's not possible. So you got to you got to you got to balance them out, man. You feel what I'm saying? You I don't want to do a show with him, but this show that he's doing might get you to another plateau. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you're using your limit. emotions, and then your emotions can knock away your blessings. You ever see somebody in a room full of people and everything's going good, and one person walk in, yep. and that person's whole attitude changes. It changes everything. Somebody in that room might have been ready to bless them with something, but seen a whole spirit change in them, and didn't like that. Right. You feel oh, what I'm saying? Spirit, spirit knows each other. Come we on, all, man. All of our spirits know each other. We come can on. feel it. Man, come on. With somebody's okay. host, you can be like, man, what's wrong? Nothing. And you're like, wow, this motherfucker's tripping off this motherfucker in the room. This right. motherfucker controlling you right now. Right. Can't is that what that. you learn in the pimp game? You Keep learn that cold. just, I learned that being around pimps. Yeah. You don't let nobody control your spirit. You don't let yeah. nobody change you from being you. If you're the peacock in the room, stay being a peacock. Don't change <laughs> I that. I love that analogy. You know what I'm saying? That's so good. That's so yeah. good. If you're the peacock in the room, why would I stop being the peacock? Watch out. Watch out, Rick. I'm going to have some feathers and coming yeah, in. Yeah, man. I want, I want my feathers to flop out. Yo. You better flop yours out. But we're going to see who <laughs> flopped the longest, man. That's yeah, it. man. That's it. Whoever flopped the longest, whoever pe we both peacock, so we we both huh, huh, let, let's keep it going. We just don't we just don't want to fight against each other. But it's a competition. It's a competition though. But it's not a fight, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's a friendly competition. Right. You know what I'm saying? We come with the same equipment. So why the would I want to fight you? The same too, huh? The laughter still sounds the same too. Come on, man. Come on, man. It don't matter. It don't matter what you say or what I say. Or how you how you make people laugh, or how I make people laugh. Yeah, you know, it's just you know I just don't. What I don't like is the in the comedy game is the shit talk. Talk about each other. People talk about each other all the time, and yeah. I don't do that. I'm not about to. Talk. I don't care who the fuck you are. I don't care what jokes you got. I don't care who jokes you stole. I don't care if you're doing jokes for Deaf Comedy Jam. That's on your ass. You know who the fuck you stole them jokes from. A lot of these dudes be doing memes and and it just the crowd don't know sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And we know because we on Facebook all the time. We see all of the me. If you're doing comedy right now, you gotta be a creative motherfucker. There's so many people doing comedy and trying to be funny that I see skits from jokes I did way back. Mm -hmm. So if I did these jokes, these people are gonna think. I got this from these skits. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was talking about men being pregnant when I first started doing comedy. But if I do that joke now, they'd be like, oh, you stole that from Kevin Hart. 
you stole that from so and so in the commercial or whatever. But people don't know these jokes has already been told and already been broadcast. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it, it's hard to be a comedian right now. You got to be creative. You got to go in your box. You got to go. You got to watch shit. You got to be first with everything. You know what I'm saying? You can't be last, like the last one to talk about this. You got to talk mm-hmm. about it right mm-hmm. when it happened. You got to go right as soon as it go out. Poof. Put yep. your shit out there, man. Because yeah. what you was thinking, somebody already writing. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's just how it is, you know? That's, and, that, and that's how fast comedy is. So if you ain't thinking like that, then you ain't you ain't ready for this shit because this shit changes. You can't keep can't keep bringing people the same old chicken, man. You gotta put some thing, especially with uh, COVID times. Everything's happens. Everything's all up. It's chaos right now. Man, come on, man. Chaos. Everything's man, chaotic. Everything. Mind, is, body, spirit. Man, everything everything else, chaotic. That's why I say you got to have your spiritual growth together. You're gonna yeah. be alone. You're going to be spending time with people. And if you're not spiritually happy and your soul still got black marks on it, you're not going to be happy with your situation. You feel me? And the people around you are not going to be happy, especially if you're the source of all the energy. You know what I'm saying? We the man. We the source of all energy. We got to be mentally strong. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you're in a home and you're the man, you the source of all the energy. So if you fucked up, the house is fucked up. The kids is fucked up. The, the woman is fucked up. Even the dog bark different. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So you true. Know, he rubbing his ass on the carpet. He got worms now. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is fucked up, man. <laughs> my dog does that all the time with me. Man, the come hell? on, man. You know, I it's just. I get my it, stove lined up. Man, it's just, man, you got to get your spirit together, man, and get the people around your spirit together, man. That, that's, that's when you're going to have happiness, man. You feel me? I, I didn't find mm-hmm. happiness until I really got spiritually happy, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm and I go through, did. I go through a lot of shit, man. I didn't been through a lot. Like I say, I got a, I got a 72 year old mother that got COPD. I take care of, man. And I mean, shit. Every day is a blessing with her. You feel me? So, I, I know what it is to go through shit. You feel what I'm saying? I know. That's so, great, man. just man, that's my that hey, man. You know, shit. It's part of life, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a beautiful it. thing. Like I say, I didn't been through the diesel. I didn't been shot. I didn't. I didn't had a brain aneurysm. I didn't had dudes try to kidnap me before, man. I didn't been. I didn't been through some shit, man. I love life, man. I love doing what I'm doing. Still loving life. Not a right chip now. on your shoulder. Still, man. <laughs> come on, man. I ain't got a chip on my shoulder about shit. I'm man. loving this shit, man. Life is well, I beautiful, tell you, man. I tell you what, the comments, people are just saying so many good things about you, man. Check this out. Uh, a good friend of mine, longtime listener, Dan Howell, uh, says, no games. Love it. Right. Uh, Dustin says, bro's a trooper, A1. Uh, Mark Gonzalez says, Rico, I greatly admire your story. Thanks for sharing. You seem to be fulfilling your life's purpose to become a rose from a concrete. To be where you are is mystifying. Bless you, bro. Blessings, blessings, blessings. You know, you're touching people's lives right now on this show. Oh, man, come on, man. You know? That's what I, all... That's my purpose, man. I keep telling you that, man. I've Does been, anybody I've have been... any questions for Rico? Anybody have questions? Anybody that's watching right now have any questions? Dude, Rico, we're like at an hour 10 right now, brother. An easy hour 10. This is amazing. This is how much comedy I can do. <laughs> you can... No, for real, man. I Dude. get high. I get high sometime, and just to practice, I'll go on live, and I'll do a 30-minute live, and then I fuck it, it'll turn into an hour of me just wow. talking shit, comedy, telling stories, just, it's just how I get down, man. I, I, don't, I love to see people happy, man. I mean, all the shit I've been through, come on, man. How could I not want to see somebody happy, man? Cheers to you, brother. Hold on Cheers right to you, man. You know, I don't drink no more. I stopped oh, drinking because... I stopped drinking because I kept I kept waking up at people's house and being babysitter. <laughs> I'm waking up at a broad house. I gotta look at the pictures on the wall to make oh, sure I'm right. where the fuck I'm at. And a bunch of kids. I walk in the living room, kid talking about my mama said you're gonna feed me at 12. I said, Well, I guess guess the fuck. I don't even know your name, little boy. <laughs> Shit, but I'm gonna feed you. Shit, make sure you eat. What time your mama get off? Five o'clock. All right. I guess I'm babysitting. Shit. 
Oh, that's hilarious. You wake up, you're like, hey, are you my daddy today? Uh, sure. <laughs> I must be your stepdaddy. I stepped over you last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm your stepdaddy. I stepped over you last night, goddamn. Oh, that's hilarious, Rico. <laughs> uh, we got we got uh, a question. We got a question from Chris Laird. He says, Is there a, ever a time when you can when you can hate the player and not the game? Never, never hate the player. Never hate the play. Hate the game because the game ain't in you. You know what mm. I'm talking about? You know, don't never hate the player, man. Uh, the player was blessed with the skills to do what he's doing. You right. feel what I'm saying? So don't hate the player. Hate the game. Hate the game for not loving you. You know? The game love him. So don't get mad at him. You know what I'm saying? If you're, if you're a hater, you hate her and him. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the word hater is. Hate her. Don't hate him. You know what I'm talking about? For real. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. <sighs> Gems all over the place, brother. Just gems all over. Oh, man. I got so many Jews. I used to tell people, man, I used to be a young kid. My dad would come in high, smelling like cocaine, hoes, cigarettes, Hennessy, and would come in the room and wake me up and would sit and talk to me for hours, man, about life. I'm not, now, no bullshit. I'm talking about just straight life, man. That would, he say shit like, look me in my eyes because what I'm going to tell you is going to burn your soul. And he would tell me shit that that would just, man, that stayed with me, man, for all my life. It's been with me all my life. It, it helped me survive, man. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And then having a father that other people looked up to, I always looked up to him. I never looked up to no other man. You know, I might have liked Michael Jordan. I looked up to Richard Pryor, but I never looked up to no other street dude. Like, I never wanted to be like no other dude in the streets. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be like my father, a leader. So I didn't, I didn't never want to be like no other dude. So nobody got me to sell drugs or run behind them or try to be like them when I was young. I wasn't with all that. You know what I'm saying? So I stayed in my lane. I played basketball. I went to school. I, I was just a, a regular kid, man. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't into no violence and none of that shit. I had a couple of fights growing up, you know, just being a, a young dude growing up in the city, but never no violence like that until I got... Till I got, you know, in the streets, man. Wow. Yeah. But you're out of the streets and on stage, man. And I love it. People, and you're touching people's lives. And I love it, man. It's a blessing, man. It's a blessing. I, I look at everything as a blessing, man. Everything. Everything. Do you got uh do you got any shows coming up? Any, any I got a show, matter of fact, Friday, man. This Friday? Where at? This Friday, a weed oh. show, man. Shh, private location. Uh, <laughs> no, you gotta go on my page, man. Uh the flyers on the page is first come, first serve. We're going to do a show, a weed-friendly 420 show nice. indoors, uh, but we're going to be a COVID. You know, we're going to take your temperature at the door, all that, man. So, you know, come through, put your mask on, and come have a uh, have a good time with us, man. I mean, my, like I say, if you go check my comedy out, you'll know what kind of person I am. And just know that a lot of my comedy is is, is off the head. I don't, I don't write anything. Some jokes I, I've perfected. You know, and then some jokes is just like they come right there, Johnny on the spot to me, man. And I just look at it. I just like I say, it's a blessing, man. It's always, man. If you, it, like I said, to go where I came from, to be where I'm at now, and to get the love that I'm getting, I am humbled and and just blessed, man. I'm blessed. That's I'm great. blessed. You know. Make sure everyone, if you want to follow Rico, go to Instagram.com/slash Rico the Great. Okay. It's up here right now. If you're listening to this on the podcast, Instagram.com slash Rico the Great. Okay. Right. Follow him. Try to get in the show. And speaking of shows, ladies and gentlemen, I have a show as well. I got to promote myself, Rico. Go ahead, man. Don't mind. I got to promote myself. <laughs> this Saturday. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. This Saturday, Elko, Nevada. One night stand. I'll be headlining January 16th, 5 o'clock and 8 p.m. The stage door at Elko, Nevada. If you're an Elko, come on out. Look at the flyer. You can see Elko, right Nevada. Damn, let's have some fun, Elko. Let's 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 bring it up. <laughs> One night stand. All right. Rico gave me uh, Rico made me humble, and he's giving me the juice to have have fun with you guys. So, Rico, thank you so much, my friend. Blessings, really man. Appreciate I appreciate you, man. I appreciate let you let me get my story across, man. It's like. You reached out to me, man, and I'm very thankful that you did. I oh, really yeah, did. man. I just like, uh, like I said, man, I don't, 
when you get a misconception of people sometimes, you know what I'm saying? People always think I'm just this rough, tough, rawr, you know, they see me and they, they the stature I have and they think that oh, Rico is just, ah, oh, man, I'm approachable, man. I'm an approachable person. I never I'm thought that, man. You and I have always been cool, dude. Oh, you from day I, one, man. Day one. From and day one. Touch of class and everything. You and I have always been awesome, awesome together, bro. And I'm very honored to have you on this show. Well, I'm really blessed, am. man. I'm blessed and I'm honored. And I thank everybody for joining in and uh, be a blessing, man. All I can say is get your spiritual help together. Get your mental help together, man. If you can, if, I tell Leon Brothers all the time, if you can go buy a $400 belt, you can go buy some spiritual help. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Go lay on one of them long couches and let somebody and tell somebody your problems and see if they can come up with a solution for them. Because a lot of us are holding in things that happened to us as kids and we too grown to keep tripping off that shit. You cut the tree off, but you never cut out the root. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if the root is still there, the tree got action and growing. So we got to stop being negative people using negative words. I can't, I won't, this won't happen for me. Never again, this, I'm broke. Never, never use those words. Stop telling the universe these negative things and expect positive things to happen for you. So it's all about planting beautiful things and watching it grow. If you plant something destructive, it's going to grow back on you. Look at these people that ran to the Capitol. They yeah. planted that destructive shit, and look what's happening. The shit is growing around them. Now they got to eat from that. Their kids are going to have to eat from that. You feel me? What yeah. you plant in the earth is what you get out the earth. That's just how it is, man. So those people that did that, everybody with their last name that's related to them is going to have a fucking problem. That's yeah. the that's what you planted in the earth by doing that evil shit that they did. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it just shows you right there, man. Like you got to be a blessing for you to to get blessings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Blessings are like boomerangs. You throw them out, they come back, man. Hundred percent. Man, I think that's the best way to end the show, Rico. God bless, hey. man. Love you, God bro. You. I'll see yeah. you. I'll see you on the stage. Yeah, brother. Soon. Thank, soon. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Ladies no and gentlemen. problem, man. One Always a blessing. One more time for Rico the Great, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Rico. One love. One love. Peace. Peace, bro. All right. Me, Mike, self, and I. That was an amazing it's show. Me, Mike, self, and I. I'm blown away. I don't know what to say, folks, but me, Mike, self, and make sure you follow Rico on Instagram.com slash Rico the Great. Me, Mike, self, and I. He has a show tomorrow. I got a show Saturday. We got shows. We're here to make you laugh. And if you just missed the live broadcast, don't worry. The rebroadcast will be back on youtube.com slash Mike B Comedy. I, I, I don't know what else to say. This has been an amazing show. Thank you, Rico, for your time. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for the stories. And, uh, Everyone, you need to stop what you're doing and watch American Pimp. Stop it. Let's watch this. It's a great movie. And you get to see Rico's uncle. Play it, play it. Pimp to pimp. <laughs> All right, guys. God bless. Stay blessed. And uh, we will see you. <laughs>